thank you for talking to World Federation Neurology. What is new about uh, autonomic neurology that you want to tell our colleagues uh, from all over the world? Well, let me start with the old news. There is not enough attention for that part of the nervous system that is in charge of probably 90-95% of our function. If you, as you just did, eat something, your digestion doesn't ask you to be turned on. It works automatically. If you walk up the stairs and you cannot adjust your heart rate, your blood pressure, you won't make it. All of this, looking into the light and adjusting the diameter of your pupil, functions perfectly well. But there are zillions of diseases, neurological and internal diseases, that involve damage of the autonomic nervous system. Once the autonomic nervous system is compromised in diabetes, for example, which is one of the most prominent diseases worldwide, once this happens, quality of life and life expectancy go down dramatically. If you have a disease as bad as multiple sclerosis, which affects the junior population, and you have on top of that, which comes automatically, autonomic nervous system dysfunction, splatter dysfunction, bowel dysfunction, lack of the ability to stand up and walk because your blood pressure control is compromised. The disease gets so much worse. We know that dysfunction of the autonomic nervous system harms not just the quality of life, but also reduces drastically life expectancy. So we need more teaching, we need more autonomic laboratories, we need people who can spread the knowledge and can do autonomic research and clinical application to the benefit of patients. That's what is missing and that's what needs to be propagated on a wide scale. Absolutely. How can we get uh, more and more younger neurologists and trainees interested in this fascinating world of autonomic neurology? By making sure that at each and every big conference, like the World Congress of Neurology, the American Academy of Neurology, but also national conferences, you do have a section where you have key representatives. It might cost a bit of investment of time, energy, and unfortunately also money to get this rolling, but unless we implement it already in medical school to an extent that doesn't exist yet, unless we teach our colleagues about the necessity to examine and evaluate the autonomic function, we will not be able to take care of patients who suffer from this disease. And this is not a minority, this is not a small group, but basically you could say almost every patient who had a stroke, or I should really say every patient, patients who have epilepsy, patients who have multiple sclerosis, they all have autonomic dysfunction. But we don't ask, we do not know how to ask, and we do not know how to examine unless we start teaching our medical school students, our residents, and also their superiors. Because guys old like I am, usually they learn very little about the autonomic nervous system. And it is really not autonomic in the sense of independent. It interacts with all organs. So if any organ is compromised, the autonomic nervous system is also compromised. What is the message for a younger neurologist or a trainee or a medical student who is interested in autonomic neurology? Where would they start? As you said very correctly, there's hardly any teaching on autonomic neurology in the medical school. I don't believe that there's enough training or learning opportunities for neurology trainees in most parts of the world also. Where would one start if they wanted to build their interest on this important topic? There are a few outstanding centers in the world. For example, the Mayo Clinic at Harvard Medical School, Vanderbilt in the United States, also some centers in Europe, in Italy, in Germany, in France. And these centers are eager to train young, interested students, fellows, residents, but also attendings or consultants. And the most important part is probably that the young physician talks to his superior and says, I'm very interested in this topic. How can you help me? Hopefully, the boss will support the young resident and will look into ways to fund and support him. 
once we get this rolling, once we get started, it will develop into, I would always, almost say, an avalanche, because there will be more and more interest. There is the American Autonomic Society, there is the European Federation of Autonomic Societies, there is the International Society of Autonomic Computer Sciences, which is basic and clinical research. So there are societies with websites where you find contact information. And, of course, they can always contact me or the current president of the European Federation of Autonomic Societies, whom you know well, our yes. common friend by the Ruhr. And I'm sure there will be ways to help these people. They can contact my former resident and now successor of Philip Lowe at the Mayo Clinic, Wolfgang Singer, or Roy Freeman at Harvard Medical School, Wolfgang Singer at the Mayo Clinic. Uh, there are many, many options. There will be a journey in Vanderbilt, David Robertson at Vanderbilt, and many others. It just depends on where on this globe the person would like to go. And we will all be happy to help uh, train and increase knowledge and awareness for our money problems. Absolutely.